Oh hey, welcome back. Have you ever wondered if there could be a truly affordable alternative to the Mastery? And what difference does changing your bridge make anyway? And what makes the Mastery so great in the first place? In today's episode, we're gonna be exploring all of these questions. <laughs> So why would you want to change your bridge anyway? Well, there's 10 reasons that I can think of why people might want to change their bridge. The first one is to get increased or improved tuning stability. The second is for improved tone and sustain. The third reason is an issue with strings popping out of the saddles when you're playing hard or hybrid picking. The fourth reason is to correct the string spacing on your guitar. If you're using a Mustang bridge, the string spacing is 55 millimeters, whereas on most guitars, you want your string spacing to be 52 millimeters. The fifth thing is to correct or improve the radius of your bridge. Again, a lot of Mustang bridges are gonna have a 7.25 inch radius to the bridge, whereas your guitar might have a 9.5 inch radius or even a 12 inch radius. The next thing is just for overall comfort. Some bridges are more comfortable than others. A big one for a lot of people is issues of rattle and buzz, especially with offset guitars and trying to eliminate any rattling or any buzzing that your guitar makes, which we don't want to be there. The next thing is intonation. Some guitars struggle with intonation more than others, and you might want to swap your bridge out to improve the intonation. Penultimately, there's a factor of looks to consider. Some people have a strong preference towards a vintage, authentic, accurate kind of look. Some people have a preference for a more modern kind of look, and there are all kinds of shades of gray in between. And lastly, some bridges have kind of unique selling points or special features uh, that set their bridge apart from the rest of the market. And one of those unique selling points might be something that interests you in a bridge. <laughs> Well, we've got these 10 or 11 factors. So how does the mastery fit into these? Where does it have strong points and where does it have negatives? Firstly, one of the great things about the mastery bridge is that it has a very flexible radius. It can go from a 7.25 inch radius to a 20 inch radius. Secondly, it has the correct or preferred 52 millimeter string spacing. Third, it is a quiet and rattle free design. Fourth, it has really deep string grooves. So this is gonna stop your strings popping out of the saddles when you're playing. Some people even say it eliminates the need for a neck shim. One of the things Mike Adam really likes about the mastery is that the shape of the groove in the saddle allows for really good behind the bridge playing and it makes those notes really pop out. And fifthly then, because it has a non-rocking design and it's made of high quality steel and brass saddles, the mastery is gonna impact your guitar's tone as well. And arguably, it's also gonna increase the sustain of the guitar. However, not everything on the mastery is gonna be perfect or to everyone's tastes. The first potential downside is regarding intonation. Now, while I'm sure the mastery bridge intonates just fine, it only has two saddles. So you're not gonna be able to fine tune the intonation quite so precisely as if you had three saddles or even six saddles with each string having its own intonation adjustment. Secondly, the looks. Now it's a bit of a Marmite bridge. I personally really like the design, but if you're more a traditionalist or if you just don't really like how it looks, that's obviously gonna be a downside for the mastery. The third thing is comfort. Um, Lord Fuzzman has done a really clear demonstration of just how sharp the edges of the mastery bridge are. And lastly, it's unique selling point, the fact that it is a non-rocking design, whilst being a plus for people who might be looking for more sustain and a more kind of solid defined tone, it can also be a negative again for people looking for a more traditional design that keeps Leo Fender's intended rocking bridge design. 
So some people love the mastery and some people hate the mastery and that's absolutely fine. The main barrier for me, especially living in the UK though, is the price of the bridge. I generally have cheaper guitars, not budget guitars, but certainly not expensive guitars either. And in the UK, a mastery bridge is gonna cost about 300 quid, which is really the price of one of my guitars new anyway. And I can't really bring myself to spend that much money, that proportion of the guitar's value on a bridge. And whilst there are some alternatives cropping up now and some more new bridges set to come out perhaps in the next year, even the Halon, which is kind of a more affordable alternative to the Mastery, is still going to be at least £200 in the UK, which again is still a significant proportion of the guitar's value. And these bridges are just too expensive for me to justify buy-in. And I've been looking for ages for a really genuinely affordable alternative to the Mastery design. <laughs> Okay, so enter the KMS Jam Bridge. So having scoured the internet for ages and ages, looking at all sorts of different websites and all different alternatives to standard offset bridges, I eventually came across Kiss My Strings. On the surface, the KMS design has a lot of similarities to the Mastery, but it's at a fraction of the price. It only cost me £125 shipped to my front door from Germany, which is considerably cheaper than a Mastery, possibly even a third of the price. So it was a very reasonable price for a bridge of this quality. Marcus, the guy behind Kiss My Strings, was really, really helpful when I reached out to him. I hit him up with a couple of questions regarding the bridge and the design and the applications it might have, and he got back to me with some really, really helpful answers. One of the things we discussed was for this Mustang, I was looking to retain the look of unplated brass saddles. This isn't the best lighting or view of this guitar, but it's got a really lovely kind of golden honey tones uh, in the wood. And also uh, there's gold or brassy notes in the pit guard, uh, as well as kind of the knobs have a lovely cream color. And I really wanted to retain raw or plain brass saddle look. Normally the jam bridge comes with specific proprietary high tech, uh, super slippery coating on them, similar to a mastery. But when I kind of showed him pictures of the guitar and we kind of talked about it a little bit, he agreed that the raw brass saddles really would complement the look of the guitar. So in the end, we came to an agreement whereby I ordered the bridge with the raw brass saddles and I have been using a specific trombone lube designed to lubricate metal on metal friction, particularly on brass instruments. But he said if I'd had any problems with that later down the line and I wanted to swap them for the higher technology uh, plated saddles then I could get in touch with him and swap those saddles which I thought was really cool that he offered to do that. <laughs> came I was absolutely blown away by the presentation and the quality and uh, just the overall attention to detail that Marcus has put into this bridge. It comes in a special branded tin with stickers and really nice high quality Delrin picks and really high quality uh, brochures of all his other products and just the attention to detail and the presentation I was just blown away by. I thought it looked so so nice and especially given the price I couldn't believe how nicely this product was to open and to install.
installed the bridge and when I got to know it a little bit I was also really happy and impressed that the flawless quality of the presentation was also matched by a really high quality bridge in itself. The bridge is milled from a single piece of steel that means it's not loads of different pieces of steel kind of welded together or however you combine bits of metal it's a single piece and generally that's considered to be a more high quality design and it's going to be more resonant and it's going to be more consistent in its makeup than lots of different pieces stuck together it's a completely original design and marcus uses his own uh, proprietary v-rail saddles and these saddles are perhaps somewhere between a mastery and a halon in that there are three saddles like a traditional tele design but they are specifically sculpted, intended to maximize the tonal transfer and the transfer of vibrations from your strings into the body of the guitar to really increase the resonance and the sustain and the tone of your instrument. The V-Rail design also means that your strings won't be popping out of the saddles. I personally use a one degree shim in the necks of all of these guitars because I prefer the feel primarily of, of, of that setup. But you, if you're an anti-shimmer, you may find this is a great bridge for you and a great alternative to something like a mastery. The main intention in the design of this bridge is firstly to increase tonal transfer. So not only do you have the special design of saddles, which are designed to increase the transfer from the strings to the instrument. It also has non-rocking bridge posts that are a really tight fit into the thimbles that it comes with. And lastly, the bridge posts lock fully with a special tool that Marcus provides so that you are going to maximize the vibrational transfer and your bridge setup is not going to move or go out of place or buzz or become dislodged no matter how hard you play. I just love the attention to detail with this bridge in general. For example, even the height adjustment screws for the saddles and the height adjustment screws of the bridge posts are made of solid brass. I think that's a really, really nice touch. Again, everything is designed to increase that tonal transfer and that vibrational transfer to increase sustain. And just the attention to detail and the quality of this bridge is really, really impressive. <laughs> So let's refer back to those 10 or 11 points as to why someone would want to upgrade their bridge. Or to think of it another way, the particular pros and cons that any bridge might have. First of all, the tune instability. Now the tune instability of this bridge is really, really good. Even with the Mustang vibrato, which is often maligned as the most unreliable and the offset vibrato with the worst tune instability, the tune instability on this bridge is really, really great. I've just got pencil graphite in the nut and this, I think it's called G-Slide trombone lube on the saddles, and I don't have any issues with the tremolo or tuning at all. The, the guitar stays in tune really, really well. Regarding the tone and sustain improvements that this bridge brings, I haven't done a direct comparison with the bridge I had in this guitar before, and that's because I got this bridge almost as soon as I finished this build. This is a parts build, and the bridge I had in there before was a really, really cheap, really, really horrible Mustang bridge from China. Uh, zinc alloy bridge it cost me I think six pounds from China 
and I just got it for spare parts but it was all I had when I first finished the build and then I drilled some extra holes in there and I put some Goto Intune brass saddles on there. Because the bridge was so low quality and so horrible that this was replacing, I didn't think it would really be a fair test or a fair representation of the differences in tonal sustain that uh, a general bridge upgrade might bring. However, what I can say is just from my experience kind of going back to back with the previous bridge and this bridge, this bridge has filled out the mid-range a lot more. It's nowhere near as uh, scooped or uh, thin sounding because it's also added some low end and some punchiness as well as just tightening up the tone overall. The guitar just sounds a lot more robust and solid now. It's added a more growly voice and it just sounds a lot more authoritative and punchy and articulate overall. Again, this bridge hasn't turned a Fender Mustang into a Gibson Les Paul in, kind of, in terms of tone or sustain, just as a mastery or any other bridge upgrade wouldn't do. However, it really has made a notable difference to just the feel of the guitar particularly. It just feels so solid, so reliable. The bridge is so stable and I feel like the tone just reflects that as well, just with a lot more fullness of tone, a lot more authority to the tone. Just punchy, more mid-range, just a really, really nice tone, especially for a Mustang, which can be a little bit thin sounding sometimes, especially compared to a Jaguar or a Jazzmaster or something like that. That being said, I don't really play uh, riffs or kind of a guitar style that requires a lot of sustain generally. I'm more of a kind of punchy, riffy, hybrid picking kind of guy, so sustain doesn't really mean a lot to me anyway. Third thing to consider is uh, string popping. Now again, like I said, I prefer a one degree shim in all of these guitars. I actually originally had the Mustang set up with a 0.5 degree shim and it just didn't feel right to me. It didn't have the feel that I associate with my other offset guitars. So I swapped that out for a one degree shim and now it just feels a lot better to me. It just feels how I expect. However, um, even with the 0.5 degree shim in it, there was no issues at all with string pop in there at all. Um, the grooves are really nice and deep. They fit all string gauges, uh, Marcus says. Um, I have 12 to 68s on here, so really beefy strings. In fact, I have 12 to 68s on all three of these guitars. And I don't have any issues with the string not fitting in the saddle and I don't have any issues whatsoever with the strings popping out despite having a really really heavy right hand and doing a lot of hybrid picking. Fourthly string spacing this bridge has 52 millimeter string spacing so the same as your mastery or your halon and actually even though the mustang bridge traditionally has a 55 millimeter string spacing I actually prefer 52 millimeter string spacing even on a mustang. The next thing to consider is the radius. Now, people have often said before that the mastery is unique in the fact that it can go from a 7.5 inch radius to a 20 inch radius, but so can the jam bridge. And it was really easy to set the intonation of this bridge easily and accurately when you have a, uh, a radius gauge. Fifthly, I think we're on fifthly now, uh, comfort. Unlike mastery bridges that have really sharp edges to the saddles, uh, this is really nice and smooth. Um, there's no sharp edges on the saddles at all. It, there's no kind of discomfort or issues there with running my fingers along the saddles at all. And even having quite a tall uh, saddle height in the middle there for the 7.25 inch radius. On these uh, saddles on the side with a lower radius, the saddle height screws don't stick out and dig in your hand at all. They're completely recessed. There's no sharp edges on the top here either. It's just a really, really comfortable experience and a comfortable design. So if you have a mastery and you just can't get on with the sharp saddle edges and you're looking for something similar, but just a little bit more ergonomic, again, this might be a really good shout for you. The next factor on the list was intonation. Now you may be one of those people who prefers a single saddle design, like a Mustang bridge so that you can adjust each saddle individually. Personally, I much prefer a saddle design that has two or more strings on a saddle. And that's because you're increasing the amount of mass under the strings, which is just going to give you again a, a bigger, thicker tone and more sustain. That being said, despite the lack of individual string adjustability, I've got the intonation bang on with this bridge. Again, despite using really, really fat, heavy strings, the 12 to 68s, intonation isn't an issue at all. I managed to get that dialed in without any difficulty whatsoever. The next thing we said was the look of the bridge. Now, I think this sits in a really nice middle ground. It has a slightly updated, modernized look compared to a traditional Jazzmaster or Mustang bridge, but it's not so space age and weird as something like the Mastery, and it's not so fat and obvious as something like a Halon bridge. It's just a really nice middle ground of kind of an upgraded, modernized take on the Jazzmaster or offset bridge, and I really like that. And particularly with these raw brass saddles, 
I think it's really, really nice. But you can just choose the plated saddles, which come in chrome, or I think you can also get them in gold as well. All right, and the last positive thing about this bridge, from my point of view, is its unique selling point features. So the unique selling point of this bridge, the reason it was designed, is to maximize the vibrational transfer from your strings to the body of your guitar, to maximize the resonance that your guitar has, the sustain it has, to give it as a robust tone as possible, and making it as stable and functional as possible. A big part of that comes down to the locking mechanism, the non-rocking design, and the specific special design of the saddles. Now, generally, I prefer a rocking bridge, personally. I just like the feeling of the movement of the bridge when I use the tremolo. I do limit that. I do put little washes in there that limit the amount of movement that the bridge makes. And the reason for that is because I do have a very heavy playing style. I find that if I've been really laying into the guitar for a set or playing at band practice for two or three hours, with a traditional offset bridge, the bridge will have completely fallen back against the back of the thimbles by the end of the practice. And that's a problem because it means that the bridge isn't rocking as it should be. And it also means that my intonation will be out. So I do really like the stability that this non-rocking bridge adds specifically for those kind of harder hitting, heavier, heavy handed moments that I do have. And at this price, it really can't be beaten for the quality of the product and the real solid feel that it gives the guitar, as well as the robust tone and stability and performance. <laughs> This is a completely honest and unbiased review. Marcus didn't ask me to review the product. He isn't giving me any money for the product. This is just completely my experience with the bridge because I think it's a really cool alternative that isn't, doesn't seem to be very well known. And so I'm gonna share the three potential downsides I can see with this bridge. The first one is that despite the locking bridge posts and the really good um, engineering and design of this bridge, you will still need lock type. Specifically what I found is that the brass height adjustment screws for the saddles would rattle in the saddles without Loctite. It took me a little while to pinpoint exactly where the buzzing or rattling I was getting was coming from and in the end I found out that it was the saddle height adjustment screws. So you will need to put a few blobs of Loctite on those screws just to stop them rattling. It's a little bit disappointing on a bridge so well engineered and designed and with its lock-in concept to keep everything as stable and buzz free as possible that there was still some buzz there but it's a very easy fix and if you play an offset guitar you should have some Loctite to hand already. The second thing is although I really like the setup procedure of this bridge and getting everything locked into place you do have to set it up just right. I found when I installed this bridge that the right hand side, the treble side bridge post didn't quite go into the thimble properly. I'm not quite sure what the issue was, but it just wasn't quite grabbing in the thimble properly. And that meant when I used the locking tool to lock the bridge posts in place, the bridge post would turn and I couldn't get the saddle properly locked in place. However, once I took the bridge post out again and just made sure it was properly seated, I had no issues in getting the, the bridge post locked into place. But that's just something to be aware of. You need to make sure that you're installing it correctly and carefully just to make sure that everything will lock and go into place properly. It's not really a negative, but you just need to be mindful of how you put the bridge together. The last potential downside is that the bridge can be a little bit fiddly, especially if you're gonna have it on a jazz master. And I'll tell you why. Whenever you have to access the electronics of a jazz master, you have to take the whole pit guard off in order to do a pickup change, to clean the pots, to uh, swap the pickups, anything like that. On a Jaguar and a Mustang, it's not quite such an issue because you have 
uh, control plates where you can access all the electronics. However, to uh, remove the bridge, you have to unlock the bridge posts each time and remove the top of the bridge. And that just makes it a little bit more fiddly than taking the strings off and lifting a traditional bridge out. I would also say that the bridge comes with just one locking tool. I'll show a clip if I haven't already of the locking process. And my hesitation with this bridge is that if you're on tour and you lose that little tool, which could be easy to do, it could fall out your tool bag or your gig bag. If that happens, you're in trouble if you need to take the bridge off because you won't have a tool to be able to unlock the bridge posts. So there is just that to bear in mind, the kit doesn't come with a spare either. And whilst I'm sure Marcus could send you one or sell you one, if you're in the middle of a tour, that's not gonna be much use to you. So there is just that to bear in mind. Make sure you don't lose the lock-in tool. covers all the pros and cons and all the features of the bridge as well. To summarize, I do really, really like the bridge. I think it's particularly for the price, an excellent, excellent product. It ticks a lot of the same boxes that a mastery does, but for half the price or even possibly a third of the price in the UK or anywhere outside of the US. So I think that's very impressive. The quality and engineering behind the bridge is also just absolutely top quality and just the presentation, the attention to detail and the care that has gone onto this bridge is just really, really impressive and inspiring. I think it looks great and I think it functions great. And I think it would be a great addition to any offset guitar where you need to improve any of those 10 or 11 aspects that go into what makes a bridge great. It's hard to really do a video demonstrating um, a bridge without video in the installation process or a direct comparison with another bridge which I haven't done. But I hope just the playing will give you a feel for how punchy and um, authoritative the tone is, as well as how stable the tremolo is, even with the often maligned Mustang tremolo. So there you go, I highly recommend checking out this bridge and having a look on the Kiss My Strings website and I will include a link to the bridge below. If you have any questions about the bridge, if you've tried this bridge, I'd be really interested to know your thoughts on this. So please leave any comments you have about your favorite bridge, about this bridge in the comments below. All right then, well until our next video, I hope you take it easy, uh, look after yourself, enjoy playing the guitar, and we'll be in touch again soon. All right, bye-bye.